where we all learn to be citizens. We all learn what it means to participate in the natural world and, and in the civilized world. Schools are our, our model community and I think children get to understand with one another and with their teachers and then when they come home with their parents how all of these pieces of our community are connected. Kids, I mean, they're like sponges. They are just so eager to learn and we want to help them have healthy habits and respectful habits and understand, you know, have them be purposeful in the choices they make and the things they do. I think their actions matter. And not only like on the global scale, like, you know, as a whole society, but individual actions can make a difference. You know, if we're gonna make a difference, we can't wait for our grandkids to make it. Like, we need to do stuff now. Composted in college, composted at home, convinced my folks. Now my job is to convince everybody else. <laughs> the, the Washington West Supervisory Union School Composting Program, we are able to get all the schools in the Mad River Valley on board to divert tons, uh, literally tons of food scraps from the Moortown landfill um, to a local compost facility, grow compost down in Moortown, Vermont. We started our business about five years ago to help reclaim organic waste from the waste stream and also to create healthy soil. We like to call it soil to plate because we really see it as all starting at the soil. The healthier that can be, the healthier our food will be, and then it'll just keep going. Our schools are one of the most vital and important pieces of our business. And for us, it's like this major thing to start a compost facility, but for the kids, it's, you know, they, they know that apple core has value and they're not, they're not gonna throw it away. To be quite honest, the driving force initially was not just the, the surprise that we don't do any composting or the composting we did was all pre-consumer coming from the kitchen, but the cost of hauling mixed solid waste. You could take the heaviest items of waste out of that stream. You know, we, we pay for all of our waste by the ton and we were able to cut that down by a third in our first year. And taxpayers, you know, school budgets are going up, so anytime you can look at, you know, saving a nickel, you're gonna do it. Kind of like you do recycling. You know, composting anything can be, can parallel the way you do recycling. It's just a matter of being clear, you know, what's going in and what's going out. And I, I just think, you know, education, but not taking your waste for granted, if you will. But if you can compost and, and you can come back to the garden and kids can see like, whoa, started off as a plant, I ate it, you know, the waste I put back here, I composted, I put that back in the garden, which helped grow more plants, and it's just this cycle. Even if we get to the point where we're thinking, okay, we're harvesting our own food, and then we're eating our own food, and then all of a sudden we throw our scraps into the trash and they go to the landfill, well, that cuts that food cycle off at a pretty important part. I think that kids should know that then, that food should then become soil again, and that those nutrients can then help us to grow more food. As kids get their math books, they should be getting the food as part of their education too. So it doesn't finish when they just sit at the table and eat their lunch. They're also seeing how much waste they generate. The compost, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. Actually reduce labor for us a little bit. We can reduce the size of the trash cans in the kitchen, so we don't need to have bigger trash cans rolling around. And just really think that those food scraps are not going to the landfill in trash bags. It feels good, I mean, I would like the kids to eat the food on their tray, but when I know that it's actually going to compost and going to be transformed back into my garden, it's a good feeling. <laughs> Our kindergartners have taken an interesting lead. So they're learning all they can about composting and, and how it happens and taking the ordinary and finding the extraordinary uh, in, in that practice. Garden class like today, it's really about what the compost feels like and smells like and looks like. And for us, you know, the excitement that the kids have and connection they make with, you know, with the microbes in the soil, they sort of almost can see them. You know, you can look into their eyes and you can see the kids understand this is a living matter. This is, they don't look at it just like it's dirt. That's what gives us hope for the promise of the future. And we, that, we're grateful to the kids for that. So we need them. <laughs> we need them probably more than they need us. This is 
finished compost. I'd like you to smell it and tell me what you smell. It smells sort of dirty. It smells, it smells like smells earth. Like so the field trip, I think, was a huge piece of our just study of compost. I think it, it really made it all make sense to them. And we came back to school, and from that, the kids had this this aha that they had that there is a compost food cycle here at our school. Well, like. Our school compost cycle here starts by being on our trays and then goes into the buckets, then goes into other compost buckets, and then gets picked up by the truck, and then it goes to the place where it's made into compost, and then returns back to school. Then it keeps going around and around and around and then decided what could we do in our school to do more. And that was when they decided that we should all be composting at snack time, not just our classroom. But they needed, you know, classrooms needed something to compost in. So they said, oh, they could make buckets. And so they made buckets and decorated them and um, labeled them for all the classrooms. And they have a job in the morning, our class, they, we have composters and they take all the buckets to all the classrooms and deliver them in the morning, and then classrooms take them back themselves, but the kindergartners are, they are school composters. And I think we're just getting to this point now where we really do have a culture, a possible paradigm shift that is embracing new ways of thinking and handling waste. I mean, who would have thought kids would lead the charge in recycling, you know, wastes? And so composting is inevitably going to be one of those things in our grab bag of tools to help us change the way planet Earth is headed in, the, the, the course of planet Earth, um, change the course, change our destiny by um, realizing the resource value of food scraps. We all have a relationship to the environment and either it sustains us and supports us or it doesn't. And to me it's just making the place, the, the, this planet Earth, a place that people can live for as long as they want to live on it. How are we going to become a sustainable community and continue to throw away so much? It doesn't discriminate by age. Um, the issue of composting and uh, the resources we have in what we like to call trash. We can't teach about it in isolation. We have to teach about it in relationship to the civilized world and to the world that we've created for, for humans. I think it teaches them that there are things that they can do um, on a daily basis, very simple things to just make our, our earth and our world a better place. And I think it's powerful. It gives them a lot of power.